and still on the breakfast, insurance is in high demand lately because of the unrest witnessed as a result of the NSARS protest. Plus, TV Africa correspondent Destiny Momo has more. Life, goods, property, and other important investments are very essential to human existence and activities. Ironically, the protest was geared towards making lives more meaningful for police officers and citizens, but it turned out to leave bitter taste in the mouth of government and some private individuals who lost investments and even got their cars looted, vandalized and burnt. Insurance comes handy at such a time like this. Following the NSAS protest that rested, we found out that a lot of damages were done to businesses and uh, a whole lot has been done to the economy. Because of this, we decided to take a look at the insurance in our country to find out how these insurance companies will be able to take care of these damages done to investments. What has happened is a lesson to all investors that no matter how small or how big your business, no matter how secure you think your location is, you should cover your business with insurance. If operators have held themselves out to say, anyone holding a valid insurance cover, particularly those one with extension of cover uh, to strike, riot, and civil commotion, They've come out to say, you don't need to worry. Bacon on us, we are your sure partner. Does this come as a disadvantage to insurance companies or it is an opportunity to satisfy their customers? At a time like this, when you have uh, a lot of uh, losses, you know, emanating from the NSAS protest and all that, uh, it's expected that insurance should pay the claims. That it's expected that claims will be huge. But this is applicable in an environment where insurance has become a culture. Because what you find there that a lot of the um, businesses, SMOs, they, they don't take insurance. Though insurance companies need the support of government and financial institutions to handle the volume of costs to be executed. As a government, we need to redouble our efforts. The government needs to redouble its efforts to deal with issues of unemployment, to deal with the issues of poverty, to deal with the issues of basic needs. The insurance companies still insist that they can support the customers come back to business at this time, irrespective of the massive destruction to businesses. Destiny Momo for PLOS TV Africa. Interesting report there by Destiny Momo. We're now joined this morning by the Director General at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Muda Yusuf, as he, of course, joins us to take a look at this. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm, I'm going to start by asking about insurance. Uh, of course, that's, that's the biggest conversation a lot of businesses across the city would be talking about this morning. Would you say that this is bad news for the insurance companies or this is, on the other hand, great news? Well, naturally, it is not good news uh, for the insurance industry because uh, no insurance company wishes that uh, the risk that they are covered is realized. And the wish of any insurance company is to ensure that the risk don't materialize, and therefore there will be no need to take claims. Because if you find a situation where claims has to be has to be paid, and the claims are quite many and huge, it's not good news for the insurance industry because it imposes a lot of burden on them, and for some of them that do not also charge properly uh, for the insurance cover in terms of the premium. But sometimes when you look at the premium that they charge compared to the risk that they cover, uh, it's not difficult 
some proportionate. And sometimes the cost of competition between one has no small, such that when the risk crystallizes, it becomes very difficult to take place. But to answer your question, it is not good news for the insurance industry. We have to put a lot of burden on them. And many of them will have to stop to pay for to pay the claims. Okay, what's the feedback you're getting uh, from these insurance company as regards this current um, uh, situation with the NSAS protest? Because if, if, um, if I'm to quote the uh, Nikon boss recently, Sunday Diary, and Thomas, I beg your pardon, uh, he said something instructive that um, most insurance companies usually give these um, covers free for riots and issues because it's not something that occurs regularly and the need there is need for that to be addressed uh in the insurance sector what's your reason what are they saying and what is the impact this is going to have well the impact that this will have first is to you know improve on the culture of the insurance because the culture of insurance currently is very low. Not many people realize the importance of insurance. That is why the insurance penetration in Nigeria is one of the lowest, even in Africa. So the consciousness is very low, the awareness is low, the appreciation of the importance of insurance is also very low. And sometimes, even the insurance companies also go to help the credibility of the industry. Because we have heard stories of people who, when their risk is dialysis, they want to make claims, then the insurance industry will not be seeing them here and there. That also contributes to the problem of credibility of the insurance industry. So, but with what has happened, I mean, I think a lot more people. We now realize that it's important to cover whatever risk you are taking, whether in business, whether in private life, to cover them with the shirt. Okay, um, I think the audio is a bit. For the sensitization of the citizens. Because the level of awareness is very low. The insurance industry or the insurance companies also have the responsibility to ensure that uh, there's a lot more sensitization on the need. To have insurance, whether in business, whether in our private life, and whatever. Insurance is very key. So I think these are some of the things that uh, uh, the recent experience have uh, resulted in. You just mentioned uh, the uh, one of the things that you mentioned is uh, how uh, poorly insurance companies in Nigeria are um, utilized. Um, is it because it is expensive? Uh, to use insurance in Nigeria? Is it all maybe because there's just very low interest generally from uh, business owners and from, uh, from well, business owners generally uh, to patronize insurance companies? And do you expect that uh, the cost of insurance after the last few weeks should increase because insurance companies would be struggling to get, you know, to sort out some of these issues? Or do you expect instead that it should maybe be reduced to accommodate more businesses who find more interest in insurance? No, generally, what you pay the insurance companies is what you call the premium. The premium generally in Nigeria is not that expensive, it's not that high. You know, sometimes it can be as low as 1%, 2%, 5%. Man is probably 10 percent of uh, the value of, of, of the insurance, you know, what they call the summer short. So it's not as if the premium that is paid is that high. The main talent is first the appreciation of the significance or importance of the insurance. Secondly, the awareness of it. Thirdly, the credibility of the industry, you know, I mean, in order to something that inspires confidence that even if there is any need for you to get your claims, you get it from 
Because the beauty of insurance is the promptness with which things are made. But when you have situations where in some insurance industries, you now begin to interrogate you, there are some small prints and all of that, you struggle to now ripple out of the payment of the claims. These are the factors that contribute. And the government itself is not so not helping the industry. Because there are some laws, there are some regulations that also require that public assets have to be compulsory. You know? Like all these things, some of the public assets that are destroyed, I think they should be destroyed. But I doubt whether they are destroyed. So there's a whole lot of negligence in the area of insurance. There's a whole lot of left leaders, leaders. All right. Um, I, I wanted to quickly ask, uh, with all that is going on, do you think you've expressed some concern? Um, do you think that these insurance uh, companies will be able to take on the volume um, of demands that will be coming? Because m m all the demands are going to be coming at once. So what, how can they handle this? Will they be able to? I believe they should be able to if they have conducted their businesses professionally. You know, and normally it's going to be challenging because the whole principle of insurance is that you don't expect a deluge of claims to come at the same time. You get freedom from a lot of people, but you don't expect that the claims payment will happen across so many people. That is the whole uh, principle of insurance. All right, let, let me, let me take you... Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I, I wanted to take you. Okay, I, I wanted to take you back to the earlier question about some of these uh, covers for things like um, riots, um, you know, minor things that don't happen all the time. You know, you don't expect this kind of volume. Uh, they were they were provided free at some point. Uh, can you speak on this? Is there need for there to be a review now so that? Situations like these, the insurance companies don't run completely at a loss. Well, uh, there, there could be a review, but what is important is that insurance business is also a specialized business. There are professional standards, there are, there are strategies, there are, there are you know, framework to ensure that insurance industry don't find themselves under this kind of pressure. So what is important is for the players in the industry to make sure that they operate within the framework of their professional standards. If professionalism is applied to it, and if they have the capacity, because it's also a question of capacity. If you carry an insurance cover that is beyond your capacity, you may have a problem. So first, the regulators in the industry have a role to play to make sure that whatever insurance cover is being taken by any company, the company must have the capacity to cover the insurance. That is why in some of the insurance or some assets, they, they have what they call reinsurance. The company don't carry the risk alone. We also share the risk with other insurance companies. So it's a question of strategy as to how the insurance company approaches the issues of insurance. If the strategy is right, if the strategies are very professional, then we should not find a situation where the insurance company will not be able to pay. All right, I, I want to move, um, um, bring it to a personal level now. You're, you're with the, or you're the DG Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, so uh, you have um, a first hand um, relationship with a lot of business owners and a lot of startups. Uh, you've also, or might also agree that a lot of businesses are struggling. Um, in the country today, um, and also mostly with, you know, the year 2020. Um, but there is a, a, numerous types of insurance. There's car insurance, there's, of course, insurance for businesses, there's uh, health insurance, there's a lot of that. Can Nigerians really afford to insure all these details of, of their, their lives and their businesses? Can, can a, a common Nigerian afford health insurance, car insurance, business insurance, and all of that? Well, uh, normally, for the average Nigerian, it may be difficult. That is why 
for some aspects of insurance. That's a legislation that makes it compulsory. For instance, health insurance. And the whole idea is that the more people that, that are covered by the insurance, the lower the premium that will be paid by the individual. That is the whole principle. For health insurance, for instance, you have a situation where you pay maybe 20000 or 30000 for a whole year to cover you, health wise, to cover you and your family. So it depends on how many, the level of compliance or the number of people that are covered by the insurance. But more importantly, if you appreciate the importance of insurance, when you relate the risk that you are covering, you relate it to the premium that you are paying, those are always very small. It could be as little as 5% of the value of the of the business or the investment that you are covering. Sometimes it could be as far as 3%, sometimes it could be as far as 2%. So when you relate it to the cover, the asset that you are covering, the amount is gone. And it's something that is also proportional to the start of your business. If you are an SME, the percentage that you pay in terms of absolute sum is much less than if you are a very big company. So it depends according to the size of business or according to the economic status of the individual. But generally, when we compare it to the value that we realize, if the risk crystallizes, I think it's something that is worth it. And it's not too expensive when we compare it to the value of the assets that are being covered. All right, um, still from all the conversation we've had so far, um, it corroborates the report, um, the second quarter GDP report from the MBS that the um, insurance sector suffered a contraction of close to 30%, and there is prediction that there will be more contraction uh, in the coming, in the next quarter. Uh, how will this affect you know, their delivery of their promises to their customers. Remember, it's not to companies as well. It's not just uh, Lagos. This NSALS protest went round the country. A lot of properties were destroyed. Businesses were sent, um, uh, set ablaze and all of that. So how are they going? How is this going to play in the scheme of things to get them to fulfill their promises? Now, we must realize that not all the properties that were affected by the protest or the aftermath of the protest, not all those properties were destroyed. We cannot assume that all the properties were destroyed. And my guess is that the percentage of the properties that were destroyed, that were affected by the protest, the probably not be more than maybe 30%. Because so just as I told you, the culture of insurance is still very low. Insurance penetration in Nigeria is one of the lowest in Africa, not to talk of globally. So by the time we isolate those ones that were insured, the magnitude of the cover may not be as high as, as we are talking about. There are many of them that think that they don't have insurance. But generally, the economy has been contracted. It's not only the insurance industry. The GDP contraction in the second quarter was 6.1%. We haven't got the GDP figures for, for the third quarter. But I can assure you, by the time it comes out, it's possible to be a contraction, which means that the economy is already in recession. And given what has happened to the answers, coupled with the issues of the COVID that we are not going to fully recover from, there is likely to be a continuation of the recession in the fourth quarter. So the economy generally is facing the major challenge, not just insurance. And as long as the economy is uh, facing a contraction, the economy is facing a downturn, practically all sectors will be affected by, 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 by the contraction or the, or the recession in the economy. So that is what has happened to the insurance. Because the insurance cover or the insurance claim that needs to be paid is proportional to the amount of cover that's that's okay.
the lesser the cover, the lesser the possibility. All right, uh, Mr. Yusuf, I'm afraid that the mud time will permit us. Uh, we want to say thank you very much for joining us and discussing this very important issue of insurance, especially after the NSARS protests. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Thank you, too. Absolutely. Again. I don't know. I, I, I was compelled to try and have an, because I really don't have like an in-depth understanding of how this insurance thing works. But the more you, you know, you see people lamenting and waiting on government to give them some handout, you begin to realize that it is imperative. It's not an, it's not an option anymore, that people must begin to think about insuring their businesses and whatever they, they I mean, what they do for a livelihood, they have to find a way to ensure it. So if you have a situation, you can have a sort of a relief before you find your feet again. Absolutely. So, so three things. Um, I hope I have time for this. First one is I feel the insurance conversation needs to be broken down to its barest you know, level so that there is more and more people that are aware that it is not as, as expensive as it seems. Because you know, I'm sure there's a lot of business owners who feel insurance must be crazy expensive. I can afford it. Forget about it. I'll pray to God instead. Um, so there, there is that one. And then second, you know, one of the reasons I was mentioning that a lot of Nigerians may not be able to afford insurance. He mentioned health insurance you know, for a year might be as much as 20, 30,000 naira. The minimum wage is 30,000 naira. How do you, how do you um, um, put that together?